OK, so in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, September 13, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13, 2020 board meeting in the meeting in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely. Subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present, and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's meeting held virtually and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting a discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jose? Present. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Williams? Ms. Anderson? Dr. Boswell McComas? Present. Ms. Charlie Green. Present. Thank you. Dr. Wheatley Phillip. Dr. Yarbrough. Dr. Zarchin. Ms. Howie. Ms. Rungfar Sangaroon. Ms. Lowry. Ms. Byers. Dr. Jones. Dr. Roberts. Ms. Burnop. Mr. Corns. Present. Thank you. Mr. Dixit. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Dr. Parandazzi. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. Ms. Shea. Present. Ms. Levenstein. Joanne English Calvert is uh, taking the place of Karen Levenstein. Thank you. Mr. Plate. Um, if there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. Thank you. Anyone else? This is Mike Zarchin. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Russ Kuhn. I just joined. Thank you. Any else? Anyone else? All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And we're going to start with Mr. Saris. Please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is George Saris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services. And the first item, ASI 800-22, is a new contract for comprehensive and modified resources for students with cognitive disabilities 
from birth to age 21 who take the alternate assessments for the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested for a uh, five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $938,305. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Are there any questions, committee members? Please state your name and question. Um, hearing none, Mr. Harris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, MBU 511-19, Reading Apprenticeship Professional Development for Academic Literacy. This is a contract modification to provide for continued disciplinary literacy professional development to secondary level teachers for the Office of English Language Arts. Approval is requested to extend the contract for nine months with one awarded vendor approved by the board in October 2018. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Harris. Yes, please, Mrs. I have a question. I have a question, Ms. Joes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ms. Han. Thank you. Um, which teachers will have access to this professional development? Um, when will they take it? And by when do you expect that they will complete it? Good afternoon, Ms. Shea. Hi, good afternoon, Ms. Han. Hi. Mr. Saris, I'm assuming it's okay if I jump in with those? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, so thank you for the question, Ms. Hen. You all may remember this is a part of our Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant. So we have actually been creating or developing cohorts for teams of teachers representing multidisciplinary approach. Um, so this training is offered for every middle and high school to send teams of teachers um, to participate in the professional development. We started this as um, identified in 2018 as part of our application for the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant. Um, and what we do is offer um, multi-stage cohorts so that teams of teachers can participate together. It's a multi-day training. For this particular extension, um, our efforts were impacted by the um, shutdown due to the COVID pandemic. We were able last year to pivot and offer some virtual training courses. And so this is allowing us to continue this effort of rollout so that any school who has had either a turnover in their teams, in their department chair teams, um, or has new teachers that wanna participate can have the opportunity to participate in this professional development. Um, for this year, the team is working to develop a schedule of those cohorts. The dates have not been finalized yet, but they will be provided to schools so that they have an opportunity to determine which teachers um, want to participate. So um, the state extended the timeline for the grant. And so what we want to do today is make sure that we extend the contract to line up with that extension. OK, thank you. And you said that it is a multi-day training. Um, by when, so yearly is offered to a different cohort, approximately how many um, teachers per school will have the opportunity, do you know? Yeah, typically, I will double check for you the numbers. Typically, we offer it to around five teachers per school. I'll double check the number of cohorts that we're able to continue to offer. Um, we've offered several to date. Um, obviously, the virtual sessions allow us to be more flexible mm -hmm. with um, numbers, um, but we typically work with schools that we can open it to a team of five, and we usually look for that to be, as I mentioned before, cross-disciplinary. So um, typically, schools have included um, math, ELA, science, social studies, and then and oftentimes they will extend it to include either a staff development teacher, fine arts, CTE, or sometimes a special educator. Um, in some instances, we've had schools that have used less than those five allocated spots, and then we can extend the offer for some schools to invite even more. So we try to be flexible and work with schools about who they would like to offer to and try to find a way to um, include them in the cohorts. Thank you. And are, this, um, are there resources that are available in the virtual format to those that can't participate? Um, in person. So, 
Yeah, so last year we did um, the company pivoted and provided the training right. virtually. There is a separate virtual training which has a separate um, pricing structure. The original grant application and our original plan, of course, was predated. Um, so there's kind of two different pathways. What we're looking at with this year is how can we maybe use the best of both worlds to create a hybrid mm -hmm. um, where the schools can have maybe some flexibility about how that participation looks, um, but we're still working on those details. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, Ms. Shea, this is Mr. Kuhn. Hi, Mr. Kuhn. Um, just to, to follow on, is there um, an expectation um, as to like how many schools are we going to build upon this like year after year or is this a one shot deal or how are you structuring this to, to keep growing? So our thank you for the question, Mr. Kuhn. Um, our original design and the one we continue to implement is that it's every school. We want this professional learning to be um, systemic. It's part of our system-wide Striving, uh, Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant. And so the multi-year rollout has allowed us to repeat cohorts so that we can continue that commitment to have space for every school to send a team of teachers to participate. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, are there any more questions for committee members? Hearing none, Mrs. Sarah, please proceed with presenting contract number three. Uh, thank you. The next item, CWA uh, 121 21, STEM Challenge Development and Instructional Enrichment. This is a new contract to provide science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, challenge development and instructional enrichment material for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended vendor and contract spending authority of $1.25 million. Thank you, Ms. Tessaris. I do have a quick question. If other committee members have a question, please proceed and I can ask at the end. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Um, this is Mr. Kuhn. I'm just curious, can somebody, uh, I was looking up um, this company, um, Unicorns and something kind of caught my eye. So <laughs> I was trying to figure out what they do. It sounds like they work in maker spaces and uh, develop hands-on type of um, instruction. And um, I was just curious as to, what are we expecting out of this group and what's the target? Like who's actually going to use them, middle school, high school, and, and what kind of numbers are we looking at? Sure, thank you for the, oh, Mr. Saris, did you want to answer that or did you want Go ahead. me to? Thanks. Okay. I apologize. I didn't mean to step on your toes. Um, so thank you for the question, Mr. Kuhn. So Future Makers is the, um, what the company is typically known by. I know that the um, contract has their specific company name that references the unicorns. Um, they are a company that works to provide STEM enrichment challenges in a number of different ways. And so the way that we have um, to date engaged with them is really through, um, they have participated in some of our countywide STEM fairs as a vendor partner that comes for part of the open portion of the challenge for our students that's coordinated through our office. Most recently, they were a part of our title one summer programming offerings. The um, next layer of how we believe schools will engage with this is many of our schools offer um, STEM nights or after school programming or um, the PTA may sponsor a STEM enrichment activity. And so the purpose in us bringing forward this contract is in our role as central office, we can work to provide that vetting, if you will, to make sure that any companies that schools are going to engage with for those types of school-based offerings um, have alignment to the next-gen science standards and to our curriculum and that we make sure that rather than having 175 or actually less our high schools because it's really k-8 to um, schools just out there using a phone book to find a company that we've identified one that we know is high quality aligned to standards and supportive of our curriculum um, so moving forward, the spending authority was to allow for the possibility. So remember, it's just a spending authority. Um, we know that we'll want to continue to use it for 
um, supporting our Title I summer programming, but we also know that we have some schools that are interested in engaging with offering either before and after school programming or potential STEM enrichment nights, or even just um, using this contract to purchase materials to allow for, they also produce um, kits, if you will, to have um, STEM challenges that can be a part of what schools offer. So there's a number of different ways that schools might engage in this. Um, our purpose was to make sure that we had a contract in place to have sustainable support for the Title I summer programming, as well as offering that uh, high quality experience for schools that want to engage in a, a STEM fair enrichment night um, or perhaps before or after school programming. All right, thank you. And and I see that it's targeted at K through eight. K through eight, yes. Okay, great. And just to, to follow on, so um, are you projecting a certain spend in your summer program, and then you have an increased amount uh, for other people to take advantage of, or is, is that the approach you're taking here? Yeah, so um, thank you for that question. Calculating spending authority is always a really interesting challenge because, of course, you're trying to have a, a future vision. Um, the, the spending for the Title I summer programming in the past was around the $25,000 mark. Um, so we know that we're going to need that each year. And then what the team, uh, what my team did was to think about an average spend. If a school wanted to engage in like a STEM fair night or purchase some of the kits, they used the company's pricing structure to estimate if it were around $1,500 per school times the number of schools plus our Title I, um, that's where they calculate it. But it, it is just our best um, forecasting, if you will, and certainly um, as you know, sometimes we wind up coming back with making adjustments, but that's really how they developed that was based on ensuring that we had sustained authority for summer programmings, but then allowing the possibility that um, any of our schools that wanted to engage in this opportunity would be able to do so. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Sure. Committee members, any more questions? There being no questions, Ms. Deseris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, JME 503-22, IT Security Services and Solutions. This is a new cooperative contract for IT Security Services and Solutions for the Department uh, of Information Technology and the Office of Network Support Services. Approval is requested for a two-year, 11-month contract with the option for two three-year extensions with 18 recommended bidders and contract spending authority uh, over the six-year, the full six-year term with the exercise of the option of the extensions at $15,450,930. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. So this is a significant amount of money. And um, I, I feel as if, I don't know, have we talked about this before and this is just a new one replacing an old one? Mr. Saris? Yeah, this is uh, replacing a contract, but in the, the new uh, reality of the um, environment that we're operating in, uh, following the cyber attack in the cloud uh, and with uh, a new firewall um, and other uh, testing and, and security assessments in place, all of which uh, have been cited in various performance audits and, and recommended over time, but which were never really funded and so uh, until uh, until the events of the last year uh, really were not fully in place. They were all just planned for the future. So that's why it's called IT security services. Yes, and it is a it's we have priced this um, really based on uh, the full term of this uh, this contract, um, which is eight years and eleven months, so it's uh, it's 
it's following we're following the state of Maryland's meek contract uh, with the vendors and with the term uh, of the contract. Um, so I'm sorry. So you said that I see that there are six year extensions available. Is that two, is that two three year extensions? Yeah, oh, two three years. OK, right. and and you're saying that the fifteen point four million dollars is going to carry us through uh, eight years and 11 months of spend. Right. And so I see that it says the current year fiscal budget is five point one million dollars is it seems pretty front loaded if that's going to carry us through um, nearly nine years. And if um, you're spending five million dollars in the first year, yeah, you're I spending a third of, I, of the overall spend. That's why I'm, why I'm asking. Yeah, I I think Mr. Corns could best address that. Um, and I don't know what first term expenses were included. Sure, and so uh, Mr. Kuhn, you're, you're absolutely right. We have um, some expenses that are uh, both uh, upfront as well as uh, going to be uh, depreciating over the, the life of this contract. Um, our endpoint protection that we've been utilizing since the end of the, uh, uh, since through the ransomware attack and into this uh, current uh, fiscal year and going forward is based on uh, the number of PCs that we have in place. And so that number will dramatically shift as we continue our ex exploration of Chromebook rollouts, uh, as well as uh, some of the uh, procurement we've done around our new firewalls and uh, things of that nature that uh, over the life of this, uh, the hardware doesn't go bad, but the uh, renewal of the, the um, services that go with it. Uh, so there is a bit of front loading in this uh, simply to lay the groundwork as well as uh, being able to do some proactive planning uh, with um, external consultation so that we can align our security footprint, footprint a little closer to the state of Maryland. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. I guess um, Unfortunately, I feel as if we have these conversations as we're talking about contracts and we're not seeing your overall plan, right? You're sitting here asking to spend significant amounts of money and, and I know that, that, you know, IT security is important and we need it and I support the spend in, um, uh, but what, what, I, what I feel as if we're kind of missing is we never actually um, spoken to you uh, about the overall plan and approach going forward. Um, we're just kind of uh, approving pieces of spending throughout the year um, as you bring them to us. And these are some long contracts. We're talking about nine years uh, and relationships with many vault, you know, many different vendors across that time span. So it seems very fragmented. Um, so I, I'm just concerned that that again we're, we're 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 focused on you know a contract that's significant when we should be talking to you about your IT security services plan and you're sharing what's going to happen there so that we understand that these are just pieces supporting the overall plan that you have. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Um, board members, any more questions? I have some, Ms. Joes. This is Ms. Hen. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, when I take a look at the contract that's listed that this contract replaces JMI 60718, it looks like the um, spending authority on that one is only about 145,000. Is that correct, Mr. Saris? I believe I was yes, looking at the correct, correct. contract. OK, yep, that's correct. And Are that we, was uh, yes. really just a, a Microsoft email exchange server. Uh, filter, I believe. Right, it doesn't seem like we're comparing apples to apples, that it's a one to one replacement with this and that this is much broader um, to include a lot of services that um, so I'm I'm curious as to 
what percentage of this are new services that we are implementing versus what are um, services that we're renewing, as Mr. Corn said. And if we are renewing, then would it be a, a many to one type of situation where this replaces many other contracts? And should there be other ones that we are looking at in terms of making that comparison that this is replacing? And not um, solely JMI 60718. Um, yeah, a lot of the most of the big ticket items like the firewall and the cloud based services are new. Um, I think the firewall alone was three to five million dollars. Is that about right, Mr. Corns? Um, no. The, the firewall with services over the next five years is uh, uh, north of that, Mr. Saris, about 7.5. That's right. So, uh, and I think that's probably the biggest single ticket item here, uh, apart from cloud based licensing and, you know, hiring vendors to come in and do security ses assessments and risk assessments. Um, Things that we just did not do previously. Um, and so, Mr. So Sarris, it really think, is a one to one. OK. Well, and so, Ms. Hen, I believe when, when we talk about one to one, we are completely subsuming um, the previous contract that was the, the very small um, mm -hmm. spend authority. So that, that one is completely subsumed within this one. Um, as, as you um, look down the vendor list, you, you can kind of yeah. see that there is a um, let's let's just call them our uh, usual suspects when it comes to who IT firms might spend money with. Right. This contract uh, helps us to also target in on those specific services, have a spending vehicle by which to utilize those mm -hmm. uh, security services from those firms and much less of a, um, I'm, I'm going to say a generic spend. Uh, I'll use CDW yeah. as an example. CDW is kind of like, um, a, the, the big box store of all IT. And so this is very targeted on bringing together our IT spend authority for security on our security posture. Well, it makes it very convenient, right? As a um, purchasing vehicle, because you can issue a purchase order for any of these services under this one contract and and within these categories and, and this you know list of vendors. Um, obtain these services very easily. My concern is um, transparency and oversight of the board that these would not need to come before the board because it would be under this this one contract authority. So when Mr. Kuhn asked about the plan, um, it is helpful when individual contracts come to us because it, we do have that that insight or those glimpses into an overall plan and what progress is being made. Um, towards our our overall health and security of our network. So I I appreciate the convenience and certainly as an IT professional, this this is a great um, vehicle for obtaining the services we need. Um, my my hesitancy is around the the transparency of it and ensuring that the board still has um, insight into our our spending. And this is um, no small amount when we go from a spending authority of you know, just under 150,000, and we're now talking about 15 million. So I, I do want to make sure that we continue to have insight and receive updates into the progress um, of our plans, and and share Mr. Kuhn's concerns on that that front. Um, I am pleased to see that we're using a vehicle, a purchasing vehicle um, that's been procured by Meek and through Prince George's Community um, College. Um, I did want to ask a question about the number of vendors. I noticed that there, the Prince George's contract had um, awarded theirs to 24. They list 22, and I think we list 18. Um, and they only list a few with MBE and SBE. So I wanted to ensure that we have met those requirements. I'm sure we've We've checked those boxes, Mr. Saris, and we meet those those requirements. But is there a reason we're yeah. not um, using all of Prince George's approved vendors? Is that just out of need, or is there a reason we're I not using all of theirs? 
question, but um, I will research that. I know that every part of our due diligence is to just, even though this is a meat contract and it's it's within the state and a state agency, uh, we uh, recheck everything. The, you know, the advertisement, the board's minutes, um, and uh, award of contracts, but um, I will uh, have to research your question and and get back to the superintendent with that information. If I have it uh, by uh, tomorrow, I'll certainly share it. Thank you. Yeah. And these extent sure. And these extensions because we we are approving. My last question is regarding the end date and our approval. Um, is based on the the end date of 2024 so any extensions would need to come back to us for approval is that correct correct or we, we cannot approve we cannot bring an extension forward until meek does so or That's, pgcc okay. so at which point that occurs then we would be back to the board great but this this spending authority would be through the um that's full i will verify that as well but that's my understanding yes period thank, thank you. you mrs ferris i also want to remind committee members for multiple questions please send those questions to mrs Ferris. copy me if you have multiple questions about how contracts work about mb wb requirements um those kind of procedural questions with that mrs Ferris, thank you and can you proceed with the next contract please yes the next item gda 306-21 web hosting and content management services this is a new competitively bid contract for web hosting and contact management content management services for the office of enterprise applications and the De department of information technology Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the option for a five-year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $600,000. Thank you, Mrs. Sarris. Um, board members, any questions? I do have a quick question, Mr. Sarris, on the web. This is contract number five, right? Yes. Um, I'm looking at the contract and it says right here on um, that all websites and data will be hosted off site and stored in a secure facility. Who owns the data? When it's, is it a third party vendor that owns it or is it owned still by BCPS? And that um, might be a Jim Corn's question. Yeah, Ms. Jones, I can jump in for that. So um, we are, we're renewing our, um, our web hosting uh, uh, software content management. All data is owned uh, by BCPS. It is the propriety of BCPS and uh, is stored uh, remotely as a part of a contract of this nature where we would be storing information remotely. The, these folks will also sign our uh, data privacy agreement so that uh, that is uh, clearly articulated, but uh, it's all it's all our stuff. They don't gain possession or ownership of our intellectual property. All right, thank you, Mr. Corn. Board members, any more questions? Uh, Mr. Hearing none, Mr. Hen? I had one. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Um, speaking of data privacy, and this is one I meant to ask on the, the previous contract, Mr. Corns, um, since we are not entering our own contract um, with the security vendors, but rather using Prince George's contract or the meat contract, um, how is it that those vendors are signing our student data privacy agreement? Isn't that part of our contract? So, and well, Ms. Hennett, I'm, and I may step out of my lane and step on Mr. Saris's part, but <laughs> even though we are um, utilizing their contract vehicle, we still uh, pen an agreement and a, sign a contract with the vendor of choice and Appendix A of those uh, contracts that contain student data uh, within them uh, is always our uh, student data privacy requirements. 
So uh, even though the board in the past has approved a cooperative contract uh, with a vendor, I've still taken all the way through the Office of Law a contract that includes our student data privacy requirements with it that is signed off by both the company and BCPS. And Even with those ICPAs, okay. Yes, ma'am. And also I did get information from the purchasing manager that of the 22 contract uh, vendors, uh, BCPS was notified that our staff only had an interest in using the 18 that we have identified here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Thank you, Mr. Corns. Sure thing. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. Next item, CWA 112-21, Fresh Bread. This is a consent to the assignment uh, of the contract from H&S Bakery Incorporated to h &S Distribution LLC. Uh, and there's only one vendor awarded on this contract. Um, and no change you, in the term or the spending authority. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Mr. Kuhn? Oh, thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Joes, when we have these modifications that are simply name changes of organizations, can we just basically um, segregate them out and then just approve them in mass going forward? Because if no other, if nothing else has changed, I don't mm -hmm. know what we really need to spend time discussing. Just a suggestion. I agree. I think that, yeah, that's actually a good suggestion. That's a great idea, Mr. Saris, if you could, um, you know, that would definitely save time so we can save time for a contract that we want to ask robust questions on. So, I believe number seven is also the same kind of modification, Mr. Saris. Is that correct? Yes. That is correct. And that would, we'll be happy to share that with the superintendent and try and change uh, the the order in which we present these. Is there any feeling about whether they should go first or last? Probably no last so we can, uh, yeah, I, I honestly just think we would save time. But go ahead and proceed with the next contract, Mr. Dixit. Or is it Mr. Saris? So good afternoon, Ms. Joes um, and members of the facilities committee. The, the next contract I had was GDA 322-21, which we already took care of because it's just consent to the assignment. Unless you have any question, I'll move to the next contract. Please proceed with the next contract, Mr. Dixit. The next contract is MBU 52419, and this will provide continued purchase of playground equipment and services for various schools. We are asking for an increase of million dollars. Uh, tonight you will see two contracts for playground equipment and that we are asking for additional funds. Uh, superintendent's team has been able to get some additional funding to take care of playground equipment throughout the county, and this will help us take care of those equipment. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Uh, committee members, any questions? Uh, I just have one um, question, Mr. Dixit. I, I fully support um, this purchase, um, but it's interesting that a company called PlayCore Wisconsin is out of Fort Payne, Alabama. Is that accurate or is that of Wisconsin? Now that's Mr. Saris's question. Uh, as far as I know, this is accurate, but we can check that for you. Okay, I, and I, I apologize. It just seems odd that it has Wisconsin in the name and it's out of Alabama, but anyway, don't worry about answering my question. We can. I have no further questions for this. Mr. Dixit, uh, thank you. And please proceed with presenting the next contract. The next contract is LKO 40221, 
for drinking water sampling. Uh, if you remember that there is regulation about testing for lead of all drinking water throughout the school system. We have completed the first round and we have shared at least two updates with the board. The regulations require that that all schools be tested uh, every three years, once in three years. So this contract will provide us uh, capability to test one third of the schools every year to maintain that cycle. Uh, and, and this is what it is for. Any Thank questions? You, Committee members, any questions? Please state your name. Um, hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. The next contract is LKO 40421. Again, this is for playground equipment and uh, we have $2 million, so we have two different contracts with $1 million spending authority. Uh, term for this contract is three years, five months, and there are four vendors uh, that will be getting this work. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, any questions? There being no questions, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. The next contract is GDA 301 uh, This is for third party qualified elevator inspection services. Department of Labor and Licensing require the third party annual inspection of elevators and any other reinspection. So this contract will cover those services. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the last contract. The last contract is ARA 218-18. This is on-call inspection, maintenance, repair, and installation of physical education facilities equipment. Uh, so this contract covers inspection of fixed or mounted equipment. Uh, in all schools. Committee members, any questions? Um, I do have a quick question on this, Mr. Dixit. This modification that's coming on, where is that money coming out of? Is this proactive maintenance or um, something that you just have on call to fix things that may break? So this is really inspection, so it is proactive and the money is coming from operating budget. OK, thank you. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. McMillian does have some questions. If you want to do that now, Mr. McMillian or. Yes, please. Mr. Go George, ahead. these these are generalized questions to Mr. Sears. Generally speaking, when we put a contract out, how long is it out there for people to actually bid on? Uh, we try and leave it out for as long as three weeks, typically. Uh, in some cases, it may, uh, it, we may extend it. And in some cases, if we're trying to uh, meet a a board request or soup to turn something around quicker, we would shorten it, but it has to be at least two weeks minimum. OK, and, and, and then how do we go about advertising these positions other than on our website? We use e Maryland Marketplace so that uh, and we uh, let everybody know that uh, that our contracts are there on that statewide uh, website. OK, and then lastly, why did some contracts we get? We award it to one vendor and other contracts. We four vendors and in this case of the IT contract, there were 18 vendors. Why? Why aren't like the, the bread and the water? Why aren't those spread out among several different vendors rather than one vendor? Well, uh, if we have 
multiple vendors that are qualified, uh, we will award to all of them if they meet the minimum requirements. Uh, in the case of bread, H&S um, Bakery has acquired most of its competition, which was Smith's Bakery and Northeast Foods. So they are they have a huge market share in the Mid-Atlantic and we have delivery requirements for them to deliver fresh products and out of state companies. I believe the next largest bakery is in Pennsylvania would not be able to meet those delivery requirements to each of our schools. Uh, on the water contract, we simply took, uh, uh, we had, there also delivery requirements. So uh, it needed, the, the bidders needed to meet that. Uh, and there, uh, there was one qualified vendor in that case, similar to the bread. Yeah. And, and this, some of these questions are stimulated by the, by the grass cutting contract a couple months ago. It just, I didn't, with, with all, all the landscaping businesses out there, and we had one vendor for the contract that expired back in July, and it just, it just struck me as odd. Uh, and then when I broke down that money per month and per week, that one vendor received for cutting grass. And I know that we're short groundsmen and that kind of stuff, and we need grass cut, I understand that. But it just shocked me that not more landscaping companies applied or bid on on those, those contracts. Thank you very much for answering my questions. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 12 be moved to the full board for approval. So Those moved, in favor, Alderman. please sit. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Slate, please take the roll call. Um, Ms. Jones, I heard Mr. Uh, was it, am I correct in saying Mr. Offerman made the motion and do we have a second? I'll second it, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. All right, roll call is for this motion. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jose? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Uh, there being five in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contract 1 through 12 will be moved forward to the board. Is there any further business committee members? Staff. Hearing none, there is no further business. The meeting is adjourned. Good evening. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone.